Ever since we've been pointing spacecraft at the Sun, two regions on our star have been missing from satellite images. The Sun's two poles have never been mapped because all the solar images we've built have remained in the ecliptic plane, the swath of space roughly aligned with the Sun's equator, where all the planets orbit. A new mission from the European Space Agency and NASA called Solar Orbiter aims to escape this plane and take the very first images of the poles. The planets are all moving and circling the sun, and so we already have some velocity going one way. If we want to launch up out of the ecliptic, it requires more energy. To get outside the ecliptic plane, Solar Orbiter uses Earth's and Venus's gravity to slingshot itself into a view of the poles. The only other satellite to fly over the poles was Ulysses, which launched in 1990 to study the solar atmosphere. But Solar Orbiter will be the first mission to capture actual images of this hard-to-reach region. Scientists think the poles could be the missing piece to understanding what drives the Sun's activity. Every 11 years, the Sun's magnetic field flips, north becomes south, and vice versa. This mysterious process has direct effects on Earth. Before the poles flip, solar activity reaches its peak. The number of eruptions increases, sending powerful bursts of solar material that can potentially harm our astronauts and satellites. We don't really have a good understanding of the global solar behavior. Another one of the mission's goals is to monitor how these eruptions and solar material travel through space. Using a suite of 10 instruments, Solar Orbiter observes an active region on the surface as it explodes and then also takes measurements as the escaping material passes directly by the spacecraft. Solar Orbiter will give us a comprehensive full view of the entire Sun and how the Sun is impacting throughout the entire solar system. At closest approach, Solar Orbiter will be closer to the Sun than Mercury, at a mere distance of 26 million miles away, the ideal distance to get a comprehensive view of the Sun and its surrounding atmosphere. It will fly close to the sun every six months and endure temperatures more than 900 degrees Fahrenheit. To survive the intense radiation, a large titanium shield protects the instruments, while a carefully orchestrated dance of opening and closing eye holes in the shield allows the instruments to peep out at the right time. Other instruments will directly measure solar material from behind the shadow of the shield. All of these observations will tell us more about the sun than we've ever known before. And by the end of the seven-year mission, we will have seen our star in a completely new way. Our understanding of the sun will change dramatically. I will say that we are living in a revolutionary moment in our field. Built by Airbus in the UK, engineers had the challenging task of designing a mission capable of observing the Sun as close as 42 million kilometres away, within the orbit of Mercury. The spacecraft has a number of key new technologies that have been developed just for the purpose of flying close to the Sun. We have a specific heat shield designed just for Solar Orbiter that will reach temperatures of over 500 degrees centigrade on the front side and will keep things as cool as just about 50 degrees centigrade on the backside to protect the sensitive electronics. The Sun generates a bubble of plasma enveloping the entire solar system. Known as the heliosphere, anything within it, including Earth, is subject to a stream of charged particles called the solar wind. Violent space weather from flares and coronal mass ejections has the potential to damage satellites, disrupt communications and knock out power grids on the ground. 
Solar Orbiter will help answer fundamental questions about the sun's activity. One of the key questions the scientists have is how the heliosphere is actually generated and how it's accelerated. So what is, what is really uh, driving the solar wind? And the second key question of the mission is understanding uh, what makes the sun change or vary over this 11-year cycle that we all know. So understanding the, uh, the magnetic properties of the sun and how these uh, change over this 11-year cycle is one of the key scientific objectives of Solar Orbiter. To measure the magnetic environment around the sun, Solar Orbiter is fitted with extremely sensitive instruments. And to capture the closest ever pictures of our star, the heat shield has peepholes through it, covered by protective doors. We are going to places where no other solar telescopes have been before. We are going to be very close to the sun to take very high resolution images of the sun, unprecedented uh, spatial resolution. And we are also going to fly over the poles of the sun, regions that are very much unknown because we don't see them very well from Earth, but they are the source of the fast solar wind and therefore are very important. To reach this orbit after launch, Solar Orbiter will use the gravity of Venus and Earth over the course of several years. Solar Orbiter is building on the rich legacy of ESA's previous missions to the Sun, including Ulysses and SOHO. In orbit around our star for more than 20 years, SOHO is still returning spectacular images. This new solar mission will complement NASA's Parker Solar Probe, which launched last year. We will not get as close to the sun, but we will have a vastly bigger payload complement, so more instruments with more cameras looking at the sun. So we will do science that is complementary to Solar Probe, and the two will really have a great deal of synergy.